welcome back to the channel. It is almost three o'clock on Monday, September 5th. This morning I popped out to a cafe to get some writing done. I have come to the conclusion that I need to actually create a detailed world bible for Between the Waves. I started to do this when I first started the project and I had kind of, I had basically given an explanation of everything that I had come up with at that point and I uh, added a few characters' names when they got added to the story, but since like November last year, since NaNoWriMo finished, I haven't really been updating it. I realized when I was doing some writing today that there's like three characters whose names I can't remember what they were supposed to be or if they even have a name yet, and there are also a few places that are pretty important places because I mean we pass through them on the journey in the book but I couldn't remember what they were called or like what they were supposed to look like or anything like that and I was just having a hard time remembering you know any rules I made or any anything I came up with because I haven't been updating this document so I started sorry my desk is so squeaky <laughs> So I started to create a document that is basically just like the world bible for Between the Waves. I'll show you what it looks like so far so that you can kind of have an idea of what I'm building. There are kind of like subsections within it. So we have the realms and the kingdoms. So like the names of the realms, what they're supposed to look like, anything that they're known for, that sort of thing. Then we have a section for notable places. So this is capital cities or specific areas, mountains, forests, caverns, towns, roads, anything like within the nine realms or within one of the realms that there's a reason we stop there. Um, it's like the location of a certain scene or anything like that. So places that I'll need to remember what the name of the town is. Then we also have the characters. So this is just gonna be the character guide uh, so that I don't forget anyone's names because there are a lot of people, there's a lot of kind of lore, there's a lot of rumors, there's a lot of messengers and that sort of thing. And I just really need to make sure that um, <laughs> I'm keeping track of all of those. And if I come up with any new details for those characters, what they look like, who they've spoken to, any history they have that might like make them, cause them to act a certain way to other people, I need to kind of keep track of that so that I know them a little better. Then I have a subsection for the laws of magic. Obviously there is magic in the world, but there has to be, you know, some sort of, sort of physical structure for the magic to follow the physics of magic, if you will. So that's what that section is for. So then I have a section called special objects. So this is because there are certain objects in the world of the nine realms that is are obviously different than the real world. So there's a couple magical objects. Uh, for example, there's a type of ore called lunacore, uh, and it is a magical mineral that basically has magical properties or it, it can store raw magic. That's something that is mined in one of the realms. Also, can I just say some of the things that are in like special objects or kind of like extra things that exist are I don't know if they'll be kept or if they'll just be details that I need to know in my own head but that don't actually play a big role in the book. Sometimes I like to drink my energy drinks from a crystal glass just because it makes me feel fancy. <laughs> I am going to spend probably half an hour or so having some pasta because I need some food and having an energy drink and then I'm going to continue filling out the world bible to the best of my ability and fill in everything that I'm currently missing from the current manuscript or like names that I hadn't come up with yet but that need to be filled in now. I just want to make sure that all of these little moving pieces are decided on and that I have kind of like a reference to check those things out because obviously as I continue writing and getting through draft two the things that I'm going to want to focus on a little bit more are the character development throughout the book as well as making sure the plot makes sense and that it's moving forward at a good pace so I don't want to spend a bunch of time trying to remember what the name of a tiny little town that they stopped in off the coast of the second realm was called. I want to have that knowledge in a, a collective space so this world bible. Cheers to more world development, and then we're gonna keep writing. Also, um, I look so tired in that clip and probably in this one as well. I didn't go to bed until after two. 
and then I woke up at 6 to make sure my video posted on time, and then I woke up at 7.30 from a weird dream, and then I woke up at 9. So... <laughs> It was always on fire, our house, our dreams. We were dancing on a wire, reckless, it seemed. We found holes in these walls, we like what we saw. Seems so strong until it falls The final storm I don't know, I'm hoping the lighting is good enough here for you to see me. Um, it's almost 6.30. I'm gonna make some tofu that I've been marinating since yesterday, so I know it's gonna be good. I never remember to actually like properly prep my tofu, so it's it's very exciting um, when I do. <laughs> the good news is that I have like, I've written like 2,500 words today. I was gonna say the bad news, but it's not really bad news. It's just, it's not 2,500 words directly into the manuscript. It's 2,500 words into the world Bible and also into an outline. As you kind of know, I was doing a bit of an outlining method or like semi-outlining method where I would basically plan out a couple scenes in advance the night before. I would know what the purpose of the scene was gonna be and then I would write, write it the next day, understanding what needed to happen and why. And that has been working, uh, but I'm getting to a point where I need a little bit more organization on what's happening. And I know this may seem confusing because technically it's the second draft, so shouldn't the plot all be figured out at this point? And the answer to that is no, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> I mean, like, the original draft was completely rewritten, right? Yeah, how did that happen? Okay, so the original draft that I wrote for NaNoWriMo last year, I ended up getting to 60,000 words, I think, or over. It was 60 or 70,000 words. And then this is the book that I ended up having to rewrite. So the rewrite happened because I don't think I liked what happened in it. <laughs> so I basically ended up rewriting all of that work that I had done for NaNoWriMo in November, which I think can sometimes be the issue for someone like me doing NaNoWriMo. I'm very competitive and being competitive when it comes to a creative thing is not really a great thing. So the thing with NaNoWriMo is that like I don't really sit back and think about the fact that I might be writing in the wrong direction because I'm so focused on getting those word counts in. This is something I've spoken about before regarding NaNoWriMo and having to hit like huge word counts and stuff. So I wasn't surprised that I had to rewrite so much of it because I was really just plowing through for the sake of getting the word count goal, which I now have learned is a mistake. So I did a rewrite and I rewrote pretty much the entire thing and it ended up around 90,000 words. And that rewrite I finished earlier this year. This draft is technically the third version of this story, but it is almost like a rewrite of the second draft, which was a rewrite of the first draft, because a lot of plot stuff is changing again. That was a really long-winded way of saying that I need to start writing out a little bit of an outline, because I've gotten to a point where the plot points are changing around quite a bit and therefore I need a little bit more structure just to know kind of where I'm going. It's all part of the process, the process that literally changes every book I write. It's so, so good. I'm gonna make my tofu and some dinner, kind of meal prep some food. Might watch a YouTube video, but I'm kind of on a roll right now um, and I wanna get more of this outline done because then I kinda wanna actually dry, dive into writing a couple scenes, so. Let's do it. I'm trying to convince myself that I don't need a second energy drink at 6.30 at night, but I just don't, I just don't feel like the first one's doing that much, you know? Tonight, 
you don't seem to forget about yourself Okay, so as you just saw, I did technically write 5,000 words today. To specify, it wasn't 5,000 words directly into the manuscript. It was more like 500 words into the manuscript and then about 4,500 words into the World Bible, which ended up being about 2,300 words. And then also into the draft two outline or draft three, I don't know what to call it, um, that I'm currently writing up right now. So I basically went through and uh, like I mentioned before, I, I added the scenes, what happened in them and what their purpose was. And I'm now going through and trying to add some later scenes as well. Like I mentioned, I've just gotten to the point where it's quite complex at this stage because I'm still kind of learning the plot myself. I do know the majority of what needs to happen and what sorts of things needs to need to be in play and being hinted at, I guess, throughout the manuscript. So I know all of those things and I'm kind of just trying to organize them into a scene list right now. Like I mentioned, at first I was kind of just doing the scenes, like the next few that I would be writing in the coming days. So I was kind of just doing like the headlight method, I think is what it's called. I have kind of gotten to the point where I want to have things a little bit more structured. So I did some brainstorming, I wrote down a bunch of things that I know need to happen. Through that brainstorming I came up with a couple other things that really need to happen that are also going to tie in so perfectly. It's like these are some of the most exciting moments of not even writing but I guess just like the development process of a story is when you're doing the brainstorming and you know at first you're kind of really slogging through it and then things start to fit together like magical little puzzle pieces and things like scenes will come to mind that make so much sense and are like an amalgamation of all of the plot lines and that somehow tie in perfectly. So I've been brainstorming and I've gotten a couple scenes like that that I just think are going to be so wonderful and I think it's going to be a really strong ending to a standalone novel with serious potential which you guys know that's something that I've needed to switch my mindset to as I've done more of this kind of developmental editing I guess during this second draft I've realized that that trilogy setup wasn't going to work anyways. It wasn't going to be nearly as fulfilling as what this first book has now become and the series potential for this first book I think is a lot more exciting than what I had before when I had planned on making a trilogy um, with a different plot structure of the first book. I hope that makes sense. It's almost 11 o'clock at night so I think I might just like chill and do some reading and see how I feel after that. I might keep on writing because I kind of feel like it, but I also maybe don't want to push it because uh, I have written over 5,000 words today. And I have to keep reminding myself that even though that was not directly put into the manuscript, the work that I did behind the scenes today is like so helpful. I'm so excited to write it. I think that with this draft I might end up writing some scenes out of order because there are some that I'm just so excited to write that I might I might just do it um which I don't really do that ever but I might try so uh that is going to be the end of the video thank you so much to everyone over on patreon who has been supporting me I got two new patrons recently which is very exciting welcome welcome I'm so happy to have you all there thank you to all of you over here on my channel who like and subscribe and comment and talk about your projects and get excited with me about my project it means the world I love it it's so fun um <laughs> So thank you so much for being here and for watching this video. Don't forget to smile and I will see you in my next video. Bye.